Welcome back to COVID Computer Camp, everybody. With a lovely day today, and we're getting ready to do Donkey Kong, which we're very excited about. We've been working hard on this. So let's get to the coding. All right, so you guys can see that we've got all kinds of different sprites lined up here. So the main one is going to be uh, Mario, but most of the code is not in Mario. The code is in the Mario Collider. You might have remembered this a couple of weeks ago when we did another platformy type game. I can't remember what it was, um, but the idea is uh, Frogger. 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 Yeah, Frogger. Right. Thanks, Ben. Uh, so the the point is that um, you don't you have a big sprite, and I don't want, for example, to be jumping and to hit a barrel above my head, because that kind of doesn't seem very realistic, realistic because of the steel girder between us. So to avoid accidentally striking stuff, we make a smaller version of ourselves, just a box that Mario follows along. So all the coding is in the little collider box, and that's what's actually moving around the screen. The graphics are just there to make it look pretty. So the majority of the coding we're going to be doing is going to be in this collider box, which is just a little per purple box. You'll see it at the bottom of the screen. Oh, Mario's dead right now. I'm not sure why he's wearing that costume. So this little purple box is the actual player character that you're moving around the screen. The uh, Mario graphic is just there for looks. Uh, most of the code has been gone here, but you guys who are working on the starter file, do not delete these blocks here. So we're using a lot of color detection to figure it out. And there's some very specific colors that have isolated from the girders here inside um, your character. So if you delete this block, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to, to pick those colors again. I mean, it's possible, and it's, but I just think it would be a big waste of effort. So leave those blocks on the screen and don't do anything with them. So there's a million places we could start with this, but I guess we want to get our character moving around. So Jeffrey helped me kind of isolate just the code that we need just to get Mario moving and uh, across the screen properly. And once we get that done, then we'll start working on the donkey on, sorry, on Donkey Kong, the uh, actual gorilla and have him start to throw barrels down. Then next session tomorrow, we're gonna revisit Mario and have the code that we need to get him jumping and doing some of the more complex platformer stuff. For, so for now, we're just gonna have him walking around the screen and climbing up ladders, but he won't be able to jump. Okay, so um, let's start with the Mario Collider. So everyone click on the little purple Mario Collider. I'm gonna blow up my screen here. All right, so um, we're gonna make program this for arrow keys or WASD. I'm gonna give you guys the option to do both or just one or the other. So whenever I say, um, put an or statement in saying this key or that key, you just go with the one if you like. So I'm just trying to program this so that um, people who like arrow keys can use it. Um, Jeffrey programmed it with WASD and I found it very, very difficult to, to, um, to move maneuver with my left hand. I'd rather hit the space key with my left hand and the arrow key with my right hand. That's just me though. Okay, we're gonna start with a green flag as we always do and that'll signal to everything across the game that it's time to get started. Like we have done in a lot of games though, very little is gonna happen when we click the green flag. We're gonna have an event here that says start level and that's what's gonna start most of the action going but we can start the movement going off here anyway. So let's grab a forever because we do wanna keep moving forever. And now we need two if statements that say what happens if we hit the left button and what happens if we hit the right button. So let's start with the right hand one. I'll go if. Now again, we're using two keys. So I have to grab an or command here. We're gonna to go to the operators, the green commands here. We're gonna grab an or. So that means either of these things can be true for this to happen inside here. And we're gonna grab two keyboard inputs from our sensing commands here. So I'm gonna go uh, grab this one here that says key space pressed right here. And I'm also gonna, so this one I'm gonna to change to uh, A, which is my left key. And I'm also gonna put another one in here and make it my actual left arrow key. So this is my input for going left. You can use either of those keys. And we're just gonna change our Y position when that happens. So let's go change Y or no, sorry, X, we're moving horizontally. Change X by minus four, because we're moving left. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing again for moving right, but we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Let's just duplicate it. So I'm gonna move my uh, cursor over the if statement here, right click and say duplicate. 
And now I've got a second piece of code here. I can just change some of the numbers and letters around. So I'm going to go W as the key for, no, is it W or is it D? Sorry, D is the key for moving left in WASD or moving right, sorry. And then my right arrow key right there. Good. And of course, we're going to change our movement by four rather than minus four. So I'll just delete that minus sign. All right. So now we have woo, a fun game. Check this out. So when I move right and move left, let's maximize the screen here for you guys. You'll see that my little purple slider is sliding across the screen. So to get Mario moving now, we just need to slave him to this purple line. We need to tell him that every time the purple line moves that you should uh, follow him along in your movement. You, we're also gonna have him face the guy so that every time, let's say I'm on top of Mario here, when I move to the right, I'll be off of Mario for just a split second. And during that time, he'll know, ooh, I have to turn to face him so that when I go on this side, he'll face left. And when I go on this side, he'll face right. And that's the way that works. So um, let's go over, jump over to Mario really quickly and just get him uh, very quickly attached to my character. I'm not gonna do the whole thing right now. We're just gonna go when green flag clicked forever. And we're gonna tell it go to. So I'm gonna go to my motion blocks where it says go to random position. I'm gonna grab that one and I'll change it to say go to Mario Collider. And that'll just keep going to the Mario Collider over and over again. Um, he's wearing the wrong costume right now. And I set that up wrong in the file. So he's probably dead for you guys too. Let's bring him back to life just by clicking on his idle animation. You can see we have tons of animations here. We've got a couple of running animations. We've got ladder climbing. And we've got him spinning around for his death animation that kind of ends in him with a little yellow halo over his head. So we'll start with idle. That's good. And you'll see now that when we play the game that Mario will actually be following the purple thing around. Nice. All right, so that's the first step. We've got our guy moving. This is, that's not very exciting yet, but we'll get to some more fun stuff in a second. Um, okay, let's do one more piece. Oh, actually, that part's a little bit more confusing for you guys. So um, I'm gonna take a break for a second and um, just talk to my audience and then we'll come right back. Um, this is yes, Abby. Will this be like a series? Or... Yes, it has to be. There's so much code here. I don't really. What I try to do is uh, try to get as much coding as I can done in around an hour. Some people start to leave after an hour, and so okay. I'm And so I, uh, there's this. This to me, based on my experience doing this in the last few months, has been that a project this big, even doing it in two hours is probably not going to be enough. I was planning to run it Thursday, Friday, but the more code I add, the, the, the more I realize it's probably going to go much, much longer than that. Um, who else was waiting to talk? What is that sound? That's Chris, Chris Copeland. Yeah, there he is. He, he muted his mic. Thank you. So remember guys to, sorry, what about? What are we going to program today? Well, we're in the middle of it. Aren't you doing it right now, Abby? No, like, what's the total thing that we're going to do? Today? Oh, we're going to do as much as we can. That's kind of like asking how big is a rubber band. It depends on how much you stretch it. How far are we going to get in uh, in the next hour, right? We're definitely going to program a little bit more of Mario's movement. And um, we'll get the first part of that done. And then we will start working on Kong. And we'll keep, try to get him throwing barrels, basically, by the end of the day. And then we can start programming the barrels and have them rolling along the ground and bouncing. I don't think we'll even get that far though. There's quite a lot of code to do here, dude. Okay. Okay. So it's just, this is the way it works. If you guys want to do big, complicated projects, then we have to run it over multiple days. I can't do a three hour class, right? Um, if I prefer to do, because we have lots of new users and they might get frustrated when they come in at part two or part three. So I really like doing small projects with you guys, but you keep demanding that I do these arcade games and they're complicated guys. You can see that there's a lot of stuff happening here. Uh, I've got Jeff. Uh, yes. Can I, see the, can I just see the barrel for a sec or the, yeah, can I just see the code in it? The code I, is... I didn't. Oh, oh there's wait, nothing where in the... the. Where's the moving? Where's the moving code then? The moving code is in the oh, collider. It's in the, Mario... the, okay, in the so Mario Collider. Yeah. Okay, the... That's all we've done so okay. far right now. Oh, okay. And so, so we just have him to... responding to right, left inputs. And then we just have Mario following him like a little puppy around the screen. Sorry, you guys can't see because you're on the wrong screen. 
All right, so the guys on Discord can still see my screen, but the guys on YouTube can't, and that's why there's some confusion. All right, so um, you guys want to, let's do one, let's do these one at a time, okay? I'm going to do my first entry in the dance off right now. And um, I'm going to, I'm actually going to do a poll afterwards here. I think I'm going to do a poll and um, we'll wait till, um, to, well, till tomorrow probably, or maybe Monday to show who actually wins. Okay. But I got to get the poll set up. So um, I'll, I'll deal with that afterwards. Um, okay. So let's just do the first dance off competitor right now while we're waiting. So here I've got four different competitors, uh, Ace Lego friend, Peter, uh, Frida and Sophia Sunshine. So let's start with, I'm not sure who Ace Lego friend is. Anyone want to fess up to being that person? Oh, that's me. That's you, Abby? Yes. Oh, okay, sorry. I keep forgetting that that's you. Okay, so here's Abby's entry. Let's go. And you want to... What? To my power. <laughs> So we had an evil robot jump in and interrupt the death. <laughs> Does it just keep going, Abby? Pardon me? He repeats like five times, but he basically does the same thing. Okay. Yeah, I think we've seen enough of it. Fantastic work, buddy. So um, I love the way you brought the villain in every once in a while. So you've got a good and a bad robot. Eh? That's a yeah, that's a re great remix, buddy. I like that a lot. Did you have fun making that? Oh, yeah. It was really fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed this robot thing. I don't know how the rest of you guys felt about it, but the whole idea of building something right from the beginning and drawing it and then bringing it to life and then making it do something is really cool. I really want to make a game with Chromie the Robot sometime in the future as well. And so, um, but that that might not be for a couple of weeks. I got some other stuff on the burner here. Uh, okay, so let's get back to coding, guys. We have a lot to do today, so I am going to uh, try to run through it really quickly. Okay, so... Um, the, oh, I'm missing something here. All right, I think I'm ready to go here. So let's just go back to the starter screen. And I will not forget today. I will not forget. I will not forget. I just keep telling myself. All right. We're back, guys. So um, we've just got some very, very simple code in here to get the guy moving left to right. Now, um, you're, you'll notice, though, that he doesn't really pay any attention to the ground at all. And that's going to be the next thing we're doing. We're going to do a little script that has us looking underneath this. Oh, let me go back. To the All right, you can see my purple guy is floating around the screen, but he doesn't pay any attention to the girders on the wall. Well, it's hard for you guys to see because the bottom of the screen's clogged up here. But anyway, so what we're going to do is start looking underneath the purple thing to see, am I touching something red or not? And if I am touching something red, then I need to bump myself back up again. If I'm not, maybe if I'm too high, like in this case, right at the very beginning, I'm actually, you guys can't see it on the screen here. So let me um, run it this way, maybe. Um, so there's a little bit of a gap underneath the screen here. And so if he's he's up too high now, so there are some cases where we have to bring him down and some cases we have to bring him up and we're constantly adjusting his height as we walk. And that way he'll follow the girder as he's walking up the hill. It's a little more complicated than it looks like. And we're gonna be doing that a lot during the coding here. We're gonna be checking what's below me and we're gonna kind of pop the character down a pixel or two or even more and see what's there and then pop him back again so fast that you won't even see that he's gone down off the screen. It's kind of cool. Okay, so um, we're taking this stuff in this if statement. I think we're putting it, no, we have an if else coming up later here. All right, so um, here's the part where we, we're gonna dip down below ourselves here. I'm gonna stop my file here. So right below these two if statements, I'm gonna have a uh, command here that says change your Y coordinate. So I'm gonna grab change Y by 10 here, and I'm gonna put it inside the loop, but underneath the other if statement. I'm gonna say change it by minus six. So what we're actually doing is making our character, let me click the green flag here, it'll drop him down and so that the collider is going to be on top of the girder now. And now we're going to check and see 
if we're touching that color once we're down there. So um, I've got this touching color thing here. So we're going to grab that and put it into an if statement down here. So let's go if. I'll grab an if. No, this is an if else. Ah, I caught myself, Peter. There you see, I do do it sometimes. All right. So I'm going to go if. Touching, and so I'm going to grab this big green thing that I have at the top. Remember to grab it from the right place. If you don't grab the right or statement, you'll actually take the thing apart, which is no good. So grab the second part of the or statement and bring it down as one unit, and then we'll drop it into that box. I basically have to make the left corner touch in this spot here. So once once it changes color, I can let go, and that pops into that hole. And so the first thing we're going to do if we're touching the color is we're just going to pop back up again because we don't want to be down below for more than a second. We're just there long enough to detect the color. And then we can change our Y back again. So we're going to change it by minus six. So we just, oh, uh, hold it by six, sorry. So we're basically moving down to check what the color is. If it's the right color, we'll move back up. And then we'll tell it to adjust itself. We're going to create a brand new series of blocks here called process collision. And that's what will move us up or down, basically. I'm not going to put it inside this loop because it's too complicated. So I'm going to create a function or a, um, a custom block. So I'm going to go down to the red my blocks. We've been using these more lately as we start to learn a bit more about code. And I'm going to click on make a block. And that'll just uh, create a new kind of block called process collision, C-O-L-L-I-S-I-O-N, like that. And then go, OK. So now we have a brand new kind of block that says process collision. And we're going to tell it. So if you're too far down, if you're detecting red, then do all the stuff you have to do to flip yourself back up on the screen again. And we're going to code that in a little bit. Now, if we don't detect um, red underneath us, we're, we're just going to do nothing. And But we still have to move our guy back up again. So I'm going to go change y by six so we dipped our toe down to see if the color was there now we go and tell it what to do if the color is off and that is this little series of blocks it's called test collision and let me find oh process collision so let's start on this this is again in the series of if statements and an if else as well okay so we'll start with an if else this will make a little more sense as we're working here guys but i'm going to go with if else and now I'm, I'm going to need that process color again. I need another copy of this. So again, just like moving it, I have to duplicate it by clicking on the right part. If I click over on the left here, I'll only get some of the blocks and not all of them. So again, I'm grabbing that or statement on the right here, which is kind of the anchor that's holding all of these pieces together. And I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to need it a couple of times, actually. So we're going to say, if I'm touching the color, We're going to change my y by one, which will just move us up one pixel. Change y by one. And right after that, inside here, we're putting another if statement. So grab a second if statement, not an if else, but an if. And we're going to grab another copy of this. So we're going to see basically after doing this the first time, am I still touching these colors or not? Um, if, uh, oh, but actually, sorry, this is the not. So let's grab that and pull that second one out. Now I need to go back to my operators and grab a not command. So we're looking for the opposite, basically. So once I've changed my Y by one, am I no longer touching the colors? And let's check. So I'm going to drag that back into the knot now. So I said, am I touching? If I am, yes, I'm going to move up by one. Now, am I not touching anymore? Then maybe I'll bring it down one more, basically. Hold it. Is that what's happening here? So if not, yeah, change Y by minus one. So basically, we're trying to settle it exactly onto the spot that's at the top. So we'll keep moving it up over and over again until it's touching. And then once it's touching, we'll move it up by one more pixel just to make sure it's right resting above the thing instead of touching it. So we're going to go change Y by minus 1. Now, if we're not touching it, we want to do the same thing. We just want to say change Y by minus 1. So now we're adjusting ourselves accordingly as we move along here. So we're just constantly checking to see what's below us. And we're moving up just one pixel at a time if we have to. So let's go and um, try this out and see if it actually works. Click the green flag. 
So there's my guy. Now, as I move him along the screen here, you can't see him at the bottom here, but as I move up the slope, you'll see that he continues to walk up the slope. And every time I get to a new height, it readjusts itself up to that next new level. So that, it, my friends, is how you get a character to walk up and down a slope in Scratch. It's really cool. It takes, um, so the only real way to do it is by probing. You keep checking what's underneath me and then adjust it as you walk. And that way it'll, so this is, has the application in all kinds of platformer games, anything where you have something that's not level anyway. So that's working nicely. We're going to take another break again and talk to my live audience and I'll be right back. All right, so we don't have a, a lot going right now. We just have um, Mario moving left and right across the screen. We're going to do a lot more with that in a little bit. Um, one thing we should probably do is just make that collider box disappear and then we can return to it um, tomorrow and do some other stuff to it. But I want to get some other elements of uh, of the game going. I want you guys to see uh, at least the beginning of uh, Donkey Kong moving and the barrels going and stuff. So we're going to do that part next. Uh, first, though, let's just make that little purple box disappear because it's starting to be So you guys might remember that uh, one of the things that we do here to um, when you want something that you can collide with, but you don't want to see it, so like this invisible box here, for example, we can't just hide it because it can't do collisions anymore. So this is a little hack that I've learned uh, that I stole from another uh, scratcher, which is just set its ghost effect to 99%. And you guys have probably seen me do this before. So I'm going to go to under my looks command to this menu item here that says set color effect to zero. I'm going to put that right at the top. And I'm going to tell it set ghost effect to 99. So 99 is so dim that you can't even see it anymore, but it's still there enough that Scratch will recognize it as a character. And you can see now that uh, my character is moving around and we don't have that problem with the, um, with the purple box being in the way. Okay, having said that, let's go back over to Donkey Kong, the actual gorilla, and we'll do a little bit of coding on him. All right, this is all blank right now, so there's nothing much to see here. Um, Mr. G, just one last question. Yeah. Is Mario supposed to be pointing in the directions of where you walk right he, now? He is, Well, not yet. We haven't started coding okay. that yet. There's a lot yeah. more code to be done on Mario. We haven't gotten him jumping or climbing ladders or whatever. There's a, quite a bit of code there, but I didn't want to bore you guys with... Like at the end of today's session, I don't want you just being able to move Mario and have nothing for him to interact with. So I thought we'd yeah. jump around and go to the gorilla now, get our barrels running, and then we'll go back to Mario. We'll finish coding his jumping and stuff like that. And then you'll have the basics of a game by the end of tomorrow. And um, hopefully, then we'll just start adding stuff depending on how much time we have. So what, what else do we have to add? We have to... Uh, He's, uh, we have to make Donkey Kong throw an, a flaming barrel down at the beginning that will catch on fire so that the fire monster can start moving on, on the bottom of the screen. We need to program the fire monster. We need some little programming on Pauline, the female character, so that she shouts, help, help, every once in a while. We need to program um, the barrels to roll properly. We're going to do a bit more of that today. And a few other little things as well. We've got the uh, these invisible colliders on the right-hand side. I didn't even bother deleting the code on that. That, that. That's basically just saying, go to a certain spot here and hide. Well, they're not even hiding. They're just showing there's just these black bars at the edge of the screen that'll um, that the barrels will bounce off of because we don't want them when they reach the end of the screen here, they bounce off this wall and then continue going in the other direction. That's a lot of talk. Let's just go back to coding now, guys. All right, so Kong. I'm going to put a green flag on him right now, but later on we're going to switch this to... Oh, actually, you know what? Let's... Um, Let's go. So I think the collider is really the main part of the program that's going to be running this. So one more thing inside the collider, we're going to say uh, when green flag clicked, we're just going to send a message that tells the rest of the game to get started, basically. So I'm going to go when green flag clicked, we're going to broadcast a message. So we're going to go to events and we're going to broadcast a new message that says um, level start. And that will get everything else going. So Kong here will actually start moving at the beginning of the level. So now back to Kong, I'm going to program him to start when he goes, when I receive level start. Now, 
The first thing we want to do is get him looking the right way. Right now he's in the wrong costume. Let's look at his costumes. So we've got an idle costume. We've got two bonging, banging his chest. We've got him picking up a barrel and then throwing a barrel. And he keeps reaching back and forth, grabbing a barrel and then throwing it, grabbing it and then throwing it. Okay, so that's all our costumes. We initially want to start in an idle costume. So we're going to go to our looks menu. We'll go switch costume to idle. There we go. Now, um, there is an introductory sound. I think I've loaded up here. Yes, so it's inside the sprite. There's a sound called intro one, and this should be familiar to anyone who's ever played Donkey Kong. So let's get it to play that sound. Now, you'll notice the part that's missing is the part where Donkey Kong jumps up and down. He starts off on this beautiful building with nice level pillars, and then he jumps up and down and goes bang, 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 and that deforms the building and makes all the girders go sideways. And that's the explanation for why the girders aren't level like they would be in a proper building, right? Uh, but we're not going to do that part. That's a little bit complicated and really doesn't add much to the game. It's more of a visual effect. So we're going to go to our sound menu here. We're going to go start sound, intro one. And then, uh, I don't think we've hidden this guy, but we have a show here in the code. And I'm not sure if we need it or not, but I've learned over painful experience that when Jeffrey puts something in the code and I don't put it, it comes back to haunt me later. All right, we wanted to go back to a start position. I've already positioned him in a start position here, but just in case he moves or we accidentally move him, I'm going to grab a go to block from the movement blocks here. And it already is pre-programmed with the, the position where my uh, where my gorilla is. So if I accidentally move him, I can always click the green flag. And he should go back, but he didn't. What? I somehow the wrong number was coded in there. OK, so I think this might be the right one. Let me drag a new one in here, and we'll just make sure that's good. The important thing is that he line up so that when he's facing to the left, it looks like he's actually grabbing a barrel. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, so that's fine. All right, so we're going to our starting position. Now we're going to wait two seconds for the music to finish working. So there's actually a bit of a pause at the beginning of the game while the music goes. You won't be able to move your player initially for the first couple of seconds either. He's going to be totally invisible. Uh, or totally unmovable for about five seconds, and then you'll be able to start moving them later. But we're going to code that part tomorrow as well. So wait two seconds. Now, um, now we need to get a Kong um, doing the chest bang thing, right? Which, any, which of course, gorillas are supposed to do. So we're going to get them to do it three times. I'm going to grab a repeat loop, one of these ones that says repeat three, ten times, and I'll change the number to three. And all we're doing is getting him to switch between costumes here. So let's go to our looks menu. I'll we'll grab a switch costume and we'll tell him switch to left chest bang. And then of course we want to delay because these animations move very quickly. If we don't, we'll just delay 0 0.2 seconds. Now, again, I'm going to use a duplicate just to save a little bit of effort. I'm going to move my cursor over the switch costume command. I'm going to duplicate and that will grab those two blocks. I'll put them right underneath the first one. And then I will go right chest bang. So now when I click the green flag, he will wait a second and then start doing the chest bang thing. And then it'll lean over and start grabbing um, start grabbing barrels. Mr. Okay. Chief? Um yes. Ben. Never mind. It's your stream, never mind. Yeah, exactly. So I'll be pausing in a couple of seconds and you can ask me some questions then unless there's something that really that's really important. So if I make a mistake here and you want to point it out, then um, then go ahead. But otherwise, just let me motor through here. And as soon as I'm done this block of code, I will um, I will take some questions. Um, OK, so once we're done that, we're going to wait one more second. And then we're going to throw a barrel down. And remember, in the as I said, in the um, original uh, Donkey Kong game, the first thing that Kong does, he throws a blue oil-filled barrel down. And it kind of bounces around, lands, 
drops into the oil barrel, catches on fire, and turns into a monster. So that's a mechanic that's put into the game to get you moving forward. The whole idea is you can't just sit here jumping over stuff. It's an arcade game, and they want you moving forward into danger. If you sit there, you're going to... Uh, the, the makers of the game want you to waste your quarter as fast as possible. It's not a quarter. It's probably a buck now, anyway. But when you play the game, they want your money to go away as quickly as possible. And so that means you have to play the game. If you, if you just sit there jumping over barrels... You can keep playing forever, right? So the monsters are going to start spawning behind you to push you forward and make sure that you go into danger up ahead in the game. All right. So we're going to wait one second. Now, uh, uh, we created a custom block here for throwing the barrels. We're not even going to bother filling it up right now, though. I'm just going to type in throw barrel down. Whoop, teach throw barrel down now he doesn't have to do that right now so it's like an optional thing that we're going to add later so i'm going to put the block into the right place right now but when he gets that command he won't have anything to do so it'll immediately just uh skip on to the next part of the block here so we're not going to bother coding that quite yet all right now we're going to wait another one second all these timings have to do with leaving enough time for your barrel to get to the bottom for the for it to catch on fire and then for you to be able to start moving before he starts throwing barrels okay so here's the main part of the code here forever he's going to wait two seconds then he's going to switch his costume so we're going to go to my let me save my file here so he's going to go switch his costume to uh, the, the one where he picks stuff up. So it's called pick up. Then we're going to wait a little bit longer so that we can just see him get into position to drop the barrel. So 0 0.5 seconds. And then we're going to switch our costume again to throw. And then he's going to throw. And the last thing he's going to do inside this block of code here is he's going to create a clone of him, of not of himself, but of a barrel. So he's going to spawn a barrel. And then when that spawned, it'll start rolling, basically. Um, all right. You know what? Um, before we take our break, I'm just going to finish up this defined barrel down. So we're going to actually have him throw the barrel down at the beginning. Um, and that's only five blocks of code, so it shouldn't take long. So underneath throw barrel down, I'm going to add a switch costume. Uh, so we're going to go switch costume to pick up, which is the one for him picking up. Let me show you what that looks like. Yeah, that one. We're going to go pick up, and then we're going to go wait half a second. So wait 0 0.5 seconds. Then we're going to go switch your costume to throw. So again, that delay is so you can see the costume change. Otherwise, it'll happen so fast, you won't have a chance. Then we're going to, uh, we're also going to create a clone of a barrel. Oh, no, and there's more that has to be done. So even after we do this, we still won't be able to see the barrel going down because we have to program the barrel. So I'm just going to finish this right now. Nothing really will happen. We're still not going to see the barrel go plunging down. So I'm going to go to my control blocks grab another create clone of barrel. So we're just going to create that one barrel that's going to, um, that he's going to toss off the screen. And then uh, we're going to broadcast a message that tells the barrel to start moving down the screen. So we're going to go broadcast a new message that's called um, create down barrel. I, uh, all right, that's a weird thing, down barrel. It's not really creating it, it's more of a... Create down barrel is only for the first barrel. Like yeah, the yeah, end. but it's not really creating, but you just finished cloning it. Jeffrey's just telling me why yeah, you call... It's not actually, um, it was initially a different thing, but what matters is that um, you're just telling the barrel you've just created that the, it's the first barrel and must be an oil barrel. Yeah. And every other barrel works differently. Okay, so, so Jeffrey just gave me a quick explanation of what he coded here. I'm gonna I changed the name to program down barrel. So we're gonna tell it to basically go down the screen. So you're not gonna be able to see that right now. Let's just go ahead and uh, maximize the screen right now. Click the green flag and see what happens. And so he grabs the barrel and then goes and creates one. They're invisible right now when they get created, so you're not actually going to see it. But he's just basically every couple, every two and a half seconds, I think, he's going to reach over, grab a barrel, and then spawn a new one. And that's where we are right now in the code. Okay, so I'm going to take another quick break, talk to my audience uh, on the live stream, and I'll get right back to you. 
Okay, guys, so um, we're pretty much done coding for part one here. I was going to get some barrels going, but then I started talking to my live audience about um, our last thing. We're having a little robot dance competition going, and um, we're going to um, – actually, I'm going to post this. You guys um, watching on the other stream might be interested as well, so um, just um, – check out my Twitter or look on my website and you'll probably see a link in the next day or two to my um, robot dance competition. By the time you see this, it'll probably be too late to vote, but you can see all the highlights uh, from the competition and all the entries if you're interested. In the meantime, so on Monday, we will we'll start by making our um, robots go down the hill. Then we'll continue programming Mario to um, start um, to be able to jump and climb up the uh, ladders. And then after that, we'll just do a few other little bits and pieces to get the game going. There's a fair amount of code here, so I can't promise we're going to get it done before the weekend. We might have to um, we might have to go and uh, finish this up in a third lesson, depending on how things go tomorrow. So in the meantime, have a, a great day and.